Hello, and welcome to another Farbank Fly Fishing School episode. In this episode, I take an in-depth look at fly fishing with nymphs for trout. Nymph fishing is usually the most productive of all trout fly fishing techniques and can result in days catching a lot of fish. Despite its productivity, some basic skills are needed in order to maximize your time in the water. So without further ado, let's take a look at just how you fly fish with nymphs in a river. Nymphing is a generalized term for fishing sub-water bucks. In the real world, there are nymphs, and these are the larva of an insect that lays its eggs in the water, the eggs sink to the bottom, they hatch out and cling to rocks for a little while, or bury in sand, and these things are called nymphs, kind of like this box of nymphs here. But again, the term nymph is just a generalization. There are other types of flies that don't actually lay nymphs, they lay larva. Oh, wow. Like these caddis things and pupas. Whatever you're fishing, we're nymphing. It doesn't matter if it's a nymph or a larva or a pupa, the style of nymphing is just nymphing. So let's take a little look at what nymphing is. First thing to realize is in the general world, the nymphs can range in an enormous range of sizes. We have here a stonefly nymph representation. It's a massive fly, it's huge, it's long, it's heavily weighted, it lives on the bottom of a river, so it needs a lot of weight to get down there, and the real fly is about this size. And so you might have a really, really, really big nymph. You might have your standard sized nymphs like this, but sometimes you might fish tiny, tiny midges. And midges, man alive, midges can get down really, really small. So small, well, this is like a size 24. It's about the smallest fly I've got in my box. But you know what? Sometimes fish feed on those size 24s. And when they do, you've got to have that size range covered just in case. Most of the time, because the nymphs live on the bottom, you need to fish nymphs with depth. So you need to get down. Nymphs will have weight built into them like this. This has got lead underneath. Nymphs might have a bead on the end, which uh, like round the head, and that bead is a bit of weight and that gets it down. So generally speaking, you want to select a range of sizes and a range of weights for when you're fishing with nymphs. Once you've got the idea of nymphs and you've got your pupa and you've got your color range and you've got your selection of nymphs, really then the next thing is to understand where to fish nymphs. Why do you want to fish a nymph? So let's take a look at the very next chapter on exactly that. Why would you fish a nymph? The why of you go nymphing is pretty simple. Do you catch a lot of fish? That's a really good reason to go fishing. Well, why would you catch a lot of fish nymphing? In a clean, healthy river system, the majority of the food is gonna be on the bottom of the river. It's gonna be tucked around the rocks, it's gonna be buried in the sand, it's gonna be washing down the river, and the fish will be feeding down deep or mid-water, but it'll be feeding under the water surface. And you don't often get all those rises of fish on the dry fly. So when you wanna catch a lot of fish and you wanna get down and catch a lot of fish, that's what nymphing will do for you. It's also very easy to do. It's easy to do because you set your rig up in a way that makes it very easy to know when a fish eats your fly, and even more important than that, it makes it very easy to control the depth. So if, for example, you're fishing in two foot of water and you want your fly close to the bottom, two feet from the water, well, the way you set your outfit up makes it very easy to control that. So let's take a look, quick look at that in our very next chapter on how to rig a nymphing outfit. Admittedly, you can certainly go nymphing with your regular fly fishing outfit, whatever you've got. A couple of considerations. We talked about fishing giant stonefly nymphs. The heavier the nymph, the heavier the line has to be to cast it, the heavier the rod has to be. So if I'm fishing really large stonefly nymphs, I'm gonna be fishing a heavy line, maybe a six weight line, and therefore I'll be fishing a six weight rod. A five weight's a good all round rod, and if you're doing a lot of small nymphing with smaller flies and getting smaller fish, a four weight rod's good. But generally speaking, a four and five weights are ideal rod unless you're fishing really a lot of those big heavy nymphs, in which case you do need a heavier line. And talking of lines, again, your general fly lines are gonna work fine for you on that. Your normal trout lines, your all-round general purpose lines are gonna be ideal. 
But like anything else, when you specialize in this and you really want to get the best kind of tackle for throwing indicators and nymph patterns, as we're about to talk about, you really need to get the right type of line that's designed specifically to do that. And this line is called an indicator line, and it's called an indicator line. Well, we're going to take a look at what an indicator is in a moment, but an indicator is a big thing, a float basically put on your leader, and that unbalances your outfit. And so lines that are designed to cast indicators are a little bit more front-loaded, and they're designed literally to throw these indicators a lot easier than your regular trout line. So if you do a lot of nymphing, it probably will pay you off to get lines that are specifically designed for that. Now, I mentioned that word indicator. What is an indicator? Well, simply, it's a float. Look at that thing. I've rigged one up here. You can see this orange ball. That's a nice little float there. That is an indicator. And there's lots and lots of different types of indicator. Every angler has and, and migrates to their favorite type of indicator. And we're not going to really delve into the advantages of, of every single indicator. I'm just going to show you a couple of indicators. And why you fish an indicator? Well, first thing is, if here's the fly, and if I'm hanging my fly two feet below that indicator, that indicator is controlling the depth. So my nymph will stay perfectly at the two foot depth. Excellent. If you know your water's two feet and you want to be near the bottom, this is a great setup. If your water's four feet, simply slide the indicator up another two feet, and then you've got your nymph a little bit deeper. So reason one for an indicator is because it controls the depth. And number two, hence the name indicator, it actually indicates when a fish grabs it. If this is floating down the water surface and a fish takes hold of this fly in its mouth, what's going to happen is that indicator ooh, will bob under or it'll pull to the side. So you watch your indicator on the water, it controls the depth, and it tells you when a fish eats the fly. That's great. Now, an indicator doesn't necessarily have to be just an indicator like that, a bright orange version of, a, of whatever it is. An indicator could equally be a dry fly. So this nymph rig here is called a hopper dropper. And what I've done here is I've tied on a dry fly onto my end of my regular leader. And on that leader, I've hung below the dry fly my little nymph. And that little nymph sinks down. And this way, I've got an advantage because now a fish might take this dry fly because fish are hatch flies are hatching and, and fish will eat these bugs. And so I'm covered with that. But it also acts as an indicator. It also acts as a depth control, so really good very useful, very effective technique of nymphing is to fish the hopper dropper. But one thing to keep in mind is this is a second fly. So in, in rivers where you're only allowed to fish one fly, you can't really fish the system. You've got to just go to the indicator to the single fly. As I said, there's lots of different indicators. There's lots of colors. You want to have a selection of colors. You want to have white ones like this for fishing in dark backgrounds. You want to have bright color ones like you've seen here on my hand earlier for those brighter days when you can't really see them. So get yourself a selection of indicator colors. Get your selection of indicator sizes too. You can see I've got different sizes here, right? In calm water, I want to fish the smaller ones. That's going to be easy to see. And in bubblier, ripplier water, I'm going to fish a slightly larger indicator. So as you get into your nymph fishing, you'll definitely want to have a selection of color and different size indicators. So that's an understanding of the basic gear you need to go fly fishing with for nymphs. Now, let's take a little look at how to rig it and some of the rigs that I use as a nymph angler when I'm out in the water. Once you've got your basic equipment and you want to put all these things together, Let's, let's just look at some of the various options, the ones that I like to fish. You already saw the standard nymph and indicator hanging down from the indicator. That's, that's the easiest way to go. An alternative to that is sometimes you might find your fly doesn't have any weight. So how do you get it to sink down? Well, here's a different rig. Similar vein, I have my indicator here, and then I've squeezed about six inches from the fly a small piece of what's called split shot. It's a little weight. And that split shot will take an unweighted fly down to the depth. You've got to get your fly down to the fish. So if the fly is not weighted, you need to add a little bit of weight on there. Something like this split shot is perfect for that. So carry some split shot with you. That'll help you as an angler. And all those are, are, are basically a single rig. So, and where you're allowed to, as, as mentioned earlier on, you've got to check the rules first. But where you're allowed to, you'll get a lot more effect by fishing two flies. Two flies will give you choice of size. That's a very important choice of color for the fish, but more importantly, a choice of depth. 
you can ride one fly at the bottom and ride another fly maybe a foot up off the bottom, so you cover a, a greater variety of depth. And all of these will be fished off an indicator pattern, so here's kind of a standard tandem rig, different type of indicator I've put on here just to show you. But what you can see, I've got my indicator, and then hanging down from the indicator, I've got an arm with one fly on, and I've got a longer arm with a second fly on. The second fly is always going to be the heaviest fly, because you want that to sink quickly and pull this fly down. So when you rig up two flies, always put your heaviest fly at the bottom. So that's one way of rigging up a tandem rig, just with a dropper tied with a just a regular knot called a triple surgeon. Another way of tying the tandem rig is to set it up with what's called a tippet ring. For me, this is probably the best technique because it's so easy to change and repair and fix frequently. And all I've got here is I've got my regular leader, that nine foot four X leader I told you about. I've tied it to this little tiny thing here called a tippet ring, tiny and small. And off the tippet ring, there's one arm and there's a dropper off that. And then a longer section here down to that heavier fly. So again, this will pull my fly down. And then if I'm setting this up to fish, I'm gonna put my indicator on at whatever depth I think the fishery requires. And perhaps one other way, a lot of people utilize this method. Uh, I don't like it as much because I don't have the freedom, but it's a very quick way of setting up. Again, you have your indicator and you tie your fly on. And then to the bend of that fly, you hang a piece, and this, even though this is smaller, this has got a heavy tungsten bead on, so this will pull that fly down. So a lot of ways of rigging up multiple flies. Again, do check the rules. Make sure you're allowed to fish two flies before you go and set up with two flies, and then find the way that works best for you. Use a tippet ring, or tie off the bend of the hook, or just tie a dropper arm and rig up your multiple flies that way. So a number of ways to rig up your nymphing outfit. Check the rules, find out what you like to do, find out what you enjoy and get into, and then once you've got the idea of the way to rig your nymphs, then you've got to go to the water and find out where to fish those nymphs. And we'll take a look at that in this very next chapter. Any of those rigs are gonna work perfectly well in pretty well any river you fish. But perhaps more important than the rigs is where do you fish in the river? Where are the fish lying? There's a bunch of clues when you look at a river to work out where the fish are. You always want to fish what's called the percentage water, the areas where there's more fish are likely to be lying. One of those greatest areas of all you want to concentrate on is what's called a drop-off. You can see here, this water is dark and there's a little bit of light color. You see the color change there? That color change indicates there's a different depth. The darker water is slower and deeper. That shallow water is a little bit quicker and shallower, and you can see that color change indicates exactly where that drop-off is. And so right now, if I was fishing this seam, I'd be throwing my nymph and indicator and let it drift right along the edge of the drop-off. That's a very high percentage section to concentrate on. Another good one is structure. Fish love structure. It's a hidey hole. It's where they can bolt if they get scared. So they like to live around structure. And structure would be a, a rock or a boulder in the river. It might be a little island, or it could be tree stumps like this and roots. These are perfect structures for fish. Probably big fish, because it's such a good structure. There's a nice hidey hole, there's a bit of depth, there's some good current bringing food down to them. So a log like that is a perfect structure. And again, I would be drifting my nymph and indicator right along the edge of that structure and expecting a fish all the time there. And perhaps one more visual clue that's really easy to see is called a current seam. A current seam, well, take a look at this. You've got that fast water flowing here, and on the back side of that fast water, there's a little bit slower water. And the edge of those two currents, that's called the seam. That's a lovely spot to concentrate fishing. And right now, again, if I was fishing this pool, I'd be popping my nymph and indicator in and letting it rush down that seam and float right through that seam. And I would be expecting it to grab every single foot of that drift, because that is such a prime location. Now, while those are the really obvious ones, one of the best places of all that a lot of people just don't see is slow water that's in fast. Take a look at this shot. You've got this big fast rapid coming down, lots of white water and waves, and right in the middle of the two, there's this little slow pocket created by a boulder or a shallow ledge or could be created by a rock, whatever it is, but there's a slow section and that will be chock full of fish. It's an amazing spot to concentrate. The current brings down the, and all the food, 
And that slow water means the fish don't work so hard to be in this position. So it's a very good area. And I would probably target that first over any of the other ones if I have one. So when you get to the river, look for the clues. The clues will tell you where that high percentage water is. Concentrate on fishing those high percentage waters and you'll definitely increase your chance of catching fish on a river. And on that note, let's stop talking about fishing and actually get down to the river and look at how to fish a nymph in a river. All right, so that gives you a few ideas of what you're looking for in a river to know where the fish lie. Now let's take a look at how you fish the river with a nymph. And really there's a couple of options you can do that. You can fish upstream and you can fish downstream. And probably the one that is easiest and gets the most fish is fishing upstream. So we're gonna start with that. And what fishing upstream means is that you're gonna cast your line up against the current and you're gonna get your flies drifting back in the current. It's really important to get a natural drift. In reality, nymphs live on the bottom and at a certain time in their life, they swim to the surface to hatch. And whilst they swim to the surface, the current is washing them downstream and fish eat them up. So a fish are used to seeing flies wash down at the same speed of the current. So what you gotta do is you gotta make sure your nymphs do the same. They come down at the same speed as the current, no faster, no slower, because that's an alert to the fish. It's easier to do that casting upstream. But the downside with that is you also have to set the hook when you get an eat. And that means you've got to have a straight line from your rod tip to your fly at all times. And so all that means is when you fish upstream, you've got to retrieve your line at the same speed as the current. So you keep in touch with that. In fast current, you're going to strip in really fast to keep in touch. In slow current, you're going to re retrieve fairly slow. But you always want this tight line that takes your rod tip to the fly so you can set the hook. And then you're set up, right? That's the best way is you can get a nice natural drift and you're also set up for this lovely hook set when you get a grab. It's very tempting when you get to a pool like this to go, oh, look at that shady deep water on the far side with those rocks, nice and deep. There'll be some big fish there and make your first cast right to those rocks. Well, don't do that yet. Start close. You've got plenty of time. You should always start close. You'll be surprised how many fish you catch on these closer inside edges and in the middle and gradually work your way out to those deeper pockets where you think the bigger trout are going to be. So fish close first is a really good little tip when you're fishing nymphing upstream. And then how you fish nymphs upstream? Well, there's a couple of things to re remember. One of them is the angle you cast is going to influence what you do. If you cast straight upstream, all you're going to do is keep your rod tip low and retrieve the line at the same speed as the current. You're going to watch your indicator for it to twitch or move, but you're just going to cast upstream and retrieve. However, if you cast more at a 45 degree angle, maybe a 90 degree angle, as you retrieve, you're also going to swing the rod around with the line to keep a straight line between you and that fly. You don't want any curves in the line developing, which happens if you don't swing the rod. So sometimes you'll swing your rod and sometimes you'll just retrieve and sometimes you'll do a bit of both. As you fish upstream, and again, more at those angles across, watch your indicator because you're trying to see it move, but also keep an eye on your fly line on the water. Watch what happens to it. And if you see a fly line developing a curve downstream, that's bad. It means your current is gonna soak your fly down faster than the current speed, which is unnatural. So when you see those curves develop, you throw in a mend the opposite direction to that curve and that readjusts it and gives you a lovely straight drift down. And if you don't know what mending is, go back to our earlier chapter on basic river tactics. And there's a whole chapter on that, on mending. And kind of get an idea of what mending is, because that's an essential skill for you as a nymphing angler. And once you've done that, really, the only next thing to do is understand when you get a fish biting. And if you're fishing an indicator like this, it's pretty obvious. You watch it. If a fish grabs hold of one of your flies, either your indicator will bob under, or it might drag to the side, or it might just hesitate in the current. And anything you see in that, indicator that moves out of the ordinary, assume it's a fish and set the hook. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna be right and there's a fish on the end. So watch your indicator, keep a tight line between you and the fly, make sure your fly drifts naturally and start fishing close and build your way up. And that's perfect. And that is upstream nymphing. It's pretty easy, it's deadly. There are some times when you want to fish downstream and that's what we're gonna look at next. Okay, so let's take a look at fishing nymphs downstream. Why would you do that? That's be the first question. There's probably two reasons you'd fish nymphs downstream. One of them is that 
there's a really good little slot in the water where you know there's fish, but you can't access it from below because there's a tree or the current is wrong or something. But you can from upstream, so you can go upstream of that slot and fish your nymph down, and that's a really nice little technique of, of getting those slots when you don't have to fish upstream. But way more useful than that is probably the fact that you can make really long drifts. When you're fishing downstream, you're gonna pay out some slack, and that's what gives you a natural drift. So what you can do is you can make a 10 foot cast and feed out 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet of slack and get these long, long drifts. Your flies in the water a long time, covering a lot of water, which you can do downstream. If you do that upstream, you've got to cast 60 feet upstream to cover 60 feet of water. So it's a lot harder to make those casts. So downstream nymphing is a really good technique, but it's a little bit more complicated because what you've got to do, you've still got to get a natural drift of your nymph. It's got to go down to the same speed as the current. And so the problem when you're fishing nymphs downstream is you've got to feed out slack at the same speed as the current. Let's say the current's going at four miles an hour. If you give slack at four miles an hour, then you get the perfect drift all the way down. Beautiful, natural drift, fish are happy. You're hauling in fish, netting fish left, right and center because you just got it right. If the current's four miles an hour and you're drifting out slack at three miles an hour, you're too slow. Underwater, your nymph is being held back. It's not natural. The fish won't take it so often. And you, how you recognize that is you look at your indicator. You watch it float down the river and you watch it maybe related to a bubble or maybe to a leaf or maybe just a bit of the current. And you just basically want to see if that indicator is just drifting dead natural. If you're paying out slightly slower, the slack slower than the current speed, what will happen is the indicator is going to be going slower than the current. The current will be passing it and that's called drag and that's definitely not what you want. So if you see your indicator dragging and going slower than the current, you just need to feed out slack a little bit faster to make sure you get that natural drift. And that's the hard part about downstream is, is getting that natural drift. But it catches a lot of fish because it covers so much water in a single attempt. So absolutely, you should practice and master that feeding out slack to fish the downstream. And there's a lot of pools where you can actually do upstream and downstream all in one cast. How about that for pretty simple? You can cast your line upstream when you've got a lovely long run and there's a nice bit of water in front of you, above you and below you. You can cast upstream and strip the slack in as the nymph comes down through that slot. And then once the nymph gets level with you, you start mending and throwing out slack and getting that drift. So the best of both worlds is do both. Find a nice long run and nymph it upstream and nymph it downstream. And really, that's the main thing about nymphing. Downstream detecting the take is no different from upstream. You're going to look at your indicator and it's going to twitch or bob under or do something that's different from the current and just assume that's a fish and the moment something happens, set the hook. So really, if you're river fishing nymphing, you can fish up, you can fish down, you can fish a bit of both. Those skills should set you up for to be a successful nymph angler on the water. And as you get into nymphing and you kind of read articles and you talk to people, you might hear about something called Euro nymphing. And we're not going to go into detail in it, but just, just take a little look at what Euro nymphing is. Now, no episode on nymphing in rivers is going to be complete without a little mention of something called Euro nymphing. Euro nymphing is the current fad, the trend. It catches a lot of fish, a lot of people get into it, so we need to talk about it. And to be honest, it's a, it's, a, it's a big enough subject that this should be an entire episode in its own. And it isn't. We're just gonna talk a little bit about what it is and why you do it and show you some of the gear and leave it at that. Euronymphing has evolved from Europe. It evolved from Poland and Czech Republic. Those are the areas where this nymphing style started. And basically it's, it's what's called a high stick nymphing technique. There's very little casting involved. There's very specialist tackle involved and it catches a lot of fish. Let's see why and what. So I've got here my Euronymph outfit and I'm gonna strip off the leader and I'm gonna strip off some of the fly line. And the first thing you're gonna see is the fly line is incredibly thin, very thin. And that's it, thin for a reason. It's very, very sensitive. The thinner that fly line is, the more sensitive it is to a grab. So it's very sensitive when a fish takes it. But the thinness means you can't cast it. 
So when you're euro-nymphing, you're not so much casting your line, you're flipping the line or pitching it. You drop the line out, you fish your technique, and once you fish the technique, instead of being able to cast, because this line is so light, you can't, so all you do is flip it and pitch it back into the same run again and drift it through again. So it's not really a casting technique. That's because the line is so thin. It's a very visual technique. And it's a very sensitive technique. You use long rods, usually 10 foot 6 or 11 foot in length. You have a very high rod tip. The higher your rod is, the more line you can control. And you're watching. You're watching one of two things. The end of your line is usually going to be bright and colorful like that. That's a visual, so you're looking at that as it's fishing down the river. You've got a high rod and you watch the end of your line. And then you've got a very, very thin leader, a very specialized leader. And the end of that leader also ends in some kind of indicator, indicator materials. You can see these two colors here. I've got a kind of a chartreuse color up here and a pink color down here. And these are the colors of the tippet material itself. So with this technique, you tend not to fish an indicator itself. You have the tippet as an indicator. And then on the end of that indicator tippet, there's usually a tippet ring, and then there's some fluorocarbon, and then the fluorocarbon leads off to your droppers and your, on your Euro nymphs. And the technique, uh, as I said, it's kind of like a high sticking one. You're going to throw your fly up, lift your rod high, let the rod swing over the flies, and you're trying to keep a vertical line. Some people call this tight line nymphing, and that's a good clue of how to do it. You want to keep a tight line from the tip of the rod straight to your flies, and you have your rod high, and you just sweep your rod over the nymph, and you're watching for that little indicator material to stop or to check in the river. And the moment it does, you set the hook. Sometimes it's a fish, sometimes it's the bottom, but if in doubt, you set the hook. As I said, this, this little chapter is not going to show you much about how to do it and go into the depths of it. It's to explain the kind of gear. And it should pique your interest because, to be fair, not that I do a lot of your nymphing, but it catches so many fish. It's a devastatingly good technique to, to get into. So you need to do a couple of things. You probably get a longer rod. You can certainly do this on your normal 9 foot 5 weight rod and make a start of it to, just to see if you like it and get into it. You absolutely need a specialty fly line. You can't get away with a regular fly line. They're just nowhere near sensitive enough. So this is a technical Euro nymph line that we make at Rio. It's that thin line you saw coming off the fly reel. So you do need a special fly line. You also need a special leader. The leader has to be way thinner than your normal leaders, again, for sensitivity. This is a Euro nymph leader that Rio puts out. You can see it's kind of a white leader, not a clear leader. That's important because you're trying to see your leader. You're trying to watch everything, so you've got to be able to see it. And on the end of that leader, you're going to attach that two-tone colored indicator tip that we showed you there. You can have a red and yellow one like this, or you can have a black and white one. And you choose the color based on your background. If you've got a dark background, the black and white shows up nicely. If you've got a lot of brightness, you've got the red and yellow one here. So you choose your color of your tippet material according to the background. And then on the end of that, you'll put on a tippet ring. At the end of the tippet ring, you put your fluorocarbon. And then the last part of the equation is to fish your nymphs. You can fish caddis pupas, you can fish nymphs, you can fish little worms like this. People catch a lot of fish on worms. So you could use these nymphs for your regular indicator style and your Euro nymph style. The nymphs aren't really different, but the gear is. And again, really, the idea of this was just to introduce the concept and to show you the gear you need. If you want to get into Euro nymphing, definitely check it out, get the right gear, check out Euro nymphing and learn how to do it. We're not going to do it in this episode, just wanted to give you an idea of the kind of gear and to highlight what your nymphing is all about. So there you have it. The core techniques and tactics that you as a fly fisher should know in order to become a successful nymph angler. Hopefully you've learned enough in this episode to approach the river with confidence and now know how to fish nymphs with the best chance of catching fish. As always, I want to end this episode with a friendly reminder to do your part in keeping the river clean and the fish healthy. Look after the environment, leave no trace of your visit to the water, and treat those fish you catch with the utmost respect. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and also hope to see you on the water one day putting your newfound nymphing skills to great use. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>